Montreal put on a great reception for Boy George last weekend as the city hosted Culture Club's first concert date of their North American tour. I've never before seen such excitement at a press conference for a rock group. Naturally, Boy George took command and answered reporters' questions as though the practice was an art. When asked about his sexual appeal, Boy George shot back, How can I be sure? <laughs> I, I hope that people, somebody finds me sexy, but I don't think that Culture Club are particularly promoting sexuality. I think that when you turn on your TV screens, there's so much sexuality anyway that it's almost passe and old-fashioned. And also, I mean, rock stars have this kind of tradition of being extremely sexy. Most of them are vulgar and very decadent. I think that we're completely different to most rock stars. The reason why there's so much publicity on the band is because of a lot of cynical people in the beginning who really didn't think that we would happen. And also because of these scenes at the airport, because people didn't realise how popular we were. And I think people have just, you know, a lot of the kind of stagnant press have just kind of woken up with the house on fire, in, in a way, and realised that something is happening. The first time I met you, a couple of years ago, you were in a hotel lobby in Toronto, just sitting there having your lunch. You can never do that sort of thing anymore. Does that ever bother you that you can't? It's amazing yeah. how much it changes. It's amazing how quickly things have changed with us, actually. From yeah. When we come back to a country, it's completely different. It's amazing. It? Where, you know, they wouldn't let him through. Do you remember when they wouldn't let you through? In Germany once, they wouldn't let George through because they had a problem on his passport. And then on the way back, they were saying, oh, you know, come in, do this, sign autographs. You know, after three days there. It's quite incredible. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you have to choose where you have your tuna salad now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be really careful what you eat. But is that disconcerting for you? I mean, doesn't it ever get to be sort of a drag, the fact that you've just no, because, totally lost? No, because, you know, like when you read all these things about poor Lady Diana, I mean, anybody who goes into the, into the media with their eyes wide open, I mean, Lady Ina isn't dumb, and neither am I. And we both realised what we... I mean, I wanted this more than anything, you know. Has it paid off? I mean, is it all it was cracked up to be? Well, I mean, I, I know what it is. I mean, a lot of artists, I've said this before, make this business look very glamorous. It is a job. And to have a job... I mean, I think it's soul-destroying not to have a job. That's why I feel sorry for people who are unemployed. I think to have a job that you really enjoy you know, you're the luckiest person alive. So, you know, it is a job and I enjoy it. And, you know, I enjoy all the things that go with it. What about the music? How do you feel it's evolved over the past couple of years? Well, I think that, you know, Karma Chameleon was drastically different for us. It was something that was a real risk. I mean, especially in England. We weren't sure about America. You know, we, we were just... I think for us it, it was something bizarre and it really worked. Because everybody said, Culture Cup will never live down, do you really want to hurt me? And it was like a needle in their backs, you know acupuncture, musical acupuncture, and now we've, we've succeeded with another song, mm. and it's taken us much bigger than we were. We don't really wor worry about following up our success either, and we just tend to write songs and then pick the one that we like the best. If you start worrying about trying to better the last song you had, uh, you're in serious trouble. Would you say your success has helped or hindered your creativity? Helped. I mean, I pride myself on being ahead of everybody else anyway. I mean, if I see any opportunity, if I see anybody trying to do something before me, I'll always beat them to it. I mean, I, I pride myself on being on the ball. I don't think that fashion-wise or music-wise, Culture Club will ever become complacent while it's still exciting for us, you know, while we're still being excited by what we're doing. I mean, you know, I come along and I'll say to John, you know, you should wear a kilt, and he'll look at me and go, I say, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> so then I... I know what suits me. <laughs> so then, I, so then I, I, I'll get Mikey to do it. Because Mikey always looks great in everything. <laughs> yeah, if you, if, you fall for the, uh, if you fall for the trappings of success, it does interfere with your creativity because you get into the partying and the going out and, you know, everybody wants to know you all of a sudden. But we're very much like a family, especially when we're on the road. You know, we keep ourselves to ourselves and we just see each other um, and we don't sort of party too much, we don't drink too much. And therefore, it, it's like a job to us, a very enjoyable job that we love doing. But because it's a job, it doesn't hinder the creativity. Yeah, because yeah. we're always thinking ahead. We're not resting on our laurels. If you let success become an extension of your personality, that's when it becomes destructive, you know, and it destroys you. Um, I'm very petty in, in my, you know, my attitude towards, you know, I'm very much, John always says to me, you know, I'm, I'm too conscious of what's going on. He says, oh, you know, he always asks questions to me, like if I say, oh, this is a good idea, he says, are you sure it's a good idea? You're just not doing it for the sake of doing it. But I'm always kind of on the ball with regards to what's happening and what's new. Uh -huh. I mean, nothing has come along to our trendy culture club. In England, every new band is like an imitation. George, isn't there ever anyone that unnerves you, that you're worried that maybe they'll sort of out-hip you? No, you know, because we, we've directed that, because in England, um, 
there are now it's become a, a record company formula to have a boy George, to have a weirdo, you know, to have a guy with makeup. And you know, even this week as I left England, there was another group called Dead or Alive who've plundered into the charts at number 40. But, you know, although the guy looks like a kind of a witch version of me. He goes to work on a broomstick. But basically... <laughs> You're so cruel. <laughs> so was nature. <laughs> no, sorry, I'm just stealing all Jeremy of his lines here. But basically, and basically what we're saying is that there are some people still left in music that do things because of sincerity and not just to make money. You know, I mean, long before we became successful, I was working as a, as a hat check boy in a nightclub. I never aspired to being a pop star then, but I still made an effort in my appearance. I think uh, we're, somebody out, out uh, hipping us isn't relevant anyway, because I think we're on a different plane to people who are trying to be hip all the time. That's where people like us, because we're not hip. Like, it's hip to be unhip with us. And also it's, one, it's, also, it's one thing to shock people, but to shock people intelligently is another thing. You know, it's very easy to come and affront people's kind of privacy. I think you have to give other, other people their dignity, and you know, I think the best way, I've said this before, you know, to blow up a building is to go and plant the bomb in the middle not to fright for the window. So if you're going to do anything, you've got to do it the best way possible. And I think I've tried very hard to make people tolerant. And I think that all these new kind of imitators and all these people that are coming along are just more concerned with being outrageous than being successful. I mean, I think people forget that when you dress up, you know, they, they say, oh, you're just trying to be outrageous. I mean, I could go out in the street naked, you know, or put a pot on my head or go out wearing a, a micro plan plant holder. And, uh, you know, if people wanted to, to think I was outrageous, it would be easy to do that. But, I mean, when somebody sits down and takes a lot of time over the way they look, there's got to be something more into it. You know, I mean, you know, the way I do things, I think, is in a very intelligent way. I don't just say, I am, therefore, you know, you are, ask me any question, I'll give you an answer. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, you know, and as a, as, as a celebrity, as a, as a pop star, you become like a parental figure and you have to give people explanations. Because you've got kids out there who rely on you. And, obviously, I might sound like a fatty daddy, but I don't think people like Paul McCartney should go around saying, legalise cannabis. You know, what he does in his bathroom is his business. You know, if he wants to use a, you know, a square-shaped sponge on his toes, that's his business. But I don't think you should go and encourage other people to do that. There's a university in Utah that recently removed all the Culture Club albums from the college bookstore pending a review of whether or not Culture Club was contributing to homosexuality and transvestism. In North America, they, um, <laughs> they ban all the sex. But the amount of violence you see on TV is quite astonishing. It's always like guys shooting each other. I'm going to get you. It's like glamorised violence. And I think that's a terrible thing. I mean, I, I, I think both are bad. Too much sex and violence is bad. But I'd rather see sex and violence, I think. You know, it's two very strange morals. You see, I think that, you know, you know, my concept of Christianity is probably better than most people's because I think, <laughs> sorry, but I think a Christian is somebody who loves all people. The idea of Christianity is that you help your fellow man. And if you say that I don't like the way you look, then, you know, and I can't accept you, then you must say the same thing to somebody who's handicapped, somebody who's disabled. You know, the whole idea of, of Christianity, it's, it's been watered down and it's been made very hypocritical. I think a real Christian is somebody who does something for other people. I don't think you become a Christian by praying. I think you have to be active. You have to show. You know, if somebody's bleeding in the gutter, nine, ten, nine out of ten people will walk over that person. The one that stops and helps them is a Christian, to me. Okay, that's my opinion. If, if these particular people want to uh, ban Culture Club for those reasons, because they feel that we're affecting and tainting other people, I mean, they must be tainted themselves already. So what sort of position are they in to sort of uh, decide? Your most recent video was so fantastic. How did you do that? This is the first video that George uh, co-wrote with the director. Okay. I co well, actually, Miss Me Blind, I, wrote, I drew the whole script up on a storyboard from beginning to end, and then we worked on it together with Steve Barron, and the actual director is a woman called Zelda Barron. But it's the first time, because in the past, I'm one of those people I get involved in everything, so, you know, all the other guys in the band have said to me, please, when it comes to videos, up to now, don't interfere. But, of course, I'm right. And I, I just wanted to, you know, with that video, I think it's our best video ever. 